It's the last day of Cisco Live here in the DevNet Zone. Well, okay, last day of Cisco Live in general and specifically in the DevNet Zone. Um, I'm really stoked that you're here this morning with me because as, we're, as I've been noticing throughout the whole week, you know, one of my favorite things about an event like this is people. Like, it, like we, we don't do this just for funsies. Like it's, it is a lot of fun, but we're not presenting to nobody. People like yourself come here and want to learn and you know, connect with other humans and just have a good time. So I thought it'd be really interesting to sit down for a couple of minutes on this last day and just talk about maybe first what's your experience been like at the event and then maybe what we talk about a little bit more if you're cool with it is what has it been like for you like in your learning of automation and how to implement it and what to do with it i'd, I'd be really curious about that but to start with what's your experience been like this week this week as you said it's all about networking that's why i love this kind of offline events like cisco live so you can meet tons of people you have your networking you share your ideas you like brainstorm and you feel like oh i'm not alone i'm not alone in this yeah i can share with other people and i can do all that fun stuff interesting stuff that's cool that's why i love this i feel that so much i i was watching one of the um uh, theater sessions i think it was this morning and one yesterday and so many of the people who were listening to whatever the conversation was. I was, I was more paying attention to like, taking pictures. But the people who were in the audience came up and, to the presenter afterwards and were saying basically that, like, you know, so-and-so, you're, you're saying something that I've been thinking about, but I didn't know what to do, and I didn't know anyone else was dealing with the same thing. And they're like, I didn't know how to say it out loud, but this was the problem I was having all along. Uh, yeah, and you have guys this share your experience post. I love it. That's first things that, uh, comes into my mind when I saw this booth. Wow, she really cares. She really cares about us. So that's cool. That's really rad. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you for telling me that. I well, I, I said this over the last couple of days while I was on camera for other conversations that folks can't see quite off camera here, but where we're located in the DevNet zone, you can basically see everything that's happening, including we have an area called the Share Your Experience area, which is right off camera, which is basically a curated design thinking workshop where you can go through and literally share your experiences with any products or APIs that Cisco has. Yeah, and see other people's experiences and read it. Yes, yeah. it's really, really cool. Okay, so thinking of all of that, I want to talk about your personal experience. Like, as you've worked into your career doing tons of networking and thinking about the idea of automation, what does that word, it's a huge word. We, we love to say the word, oh, just automate things. Programmability, these huge verbs and adjectives that sound, they sound cool, but when you actually sit and say, cool, automate. What? <laughs> like, what do I actually, what's the first thing that I do? So for you, I guess what I'm really curious about, I hope others are too, is where did you start? Like, what was the first thing you're like, I think I might be able to make that a little bit easier for myself. Yeah, where can I start? Uh, first of all, I'm a network engineer. To be more specific, I'm a NetOps engineer. Okay. Yeah. You know what? Uh, I've just decided I'm a Dev NetOps engineer. That's my title. That's I what it. I do. Actually, <laughs> that's what I do every day. Yeah, it all began with developer.cisco.com. I started to dig into Terraform configuration basics through some videos and excited by what I learned, I uh, pop up to my team and asking questions about, do you, do you guys familiar with Terraform, mm -hmm. with GitLab, with Dockers and how their workflow operates? Back in the time I work in a DevOps team, but to be honest, I was pretty clueless about DevOps culture, DevOps approaches. We started as a startup company with 20 DevOps and operation engineers, and only, guess what, three of us were handling network, networking. So, it's so it's, I, I shouldn't say that's so surprising, because it isn't surprising, unfortunately, yet it, it is still kind of like a shock how few, few people in some cases are really dedicated towards the network, the thing that actually, that all the applications actually sit on top of. Yeah. Like, you, like, we don't build networks just for fun. We build them so apps can run on them. Sort of like, you build apps, but you don't just build them because you want to build an app. You build it because you need to serve a purpose. Same thing for the network. Like, we, we function, we do these functions because it needs to serve something. So it's still so surprising for me to hear that, you know, well, so all little. All that chaos, yeah. So I didn't have time to learn about DevOps and all that fancy stuff because I uh, have to deal with networking. We, only three of us, yeah? So, but, you know, this uh, Hank Preston videos about Terraform mm -hmm. really sparked something in me. And I decided to start my first proof of concept 
for network automation. And it grew. Uh, it started as some project on ACI. Okay. I clicked like, oh, ACI has Terraform provider for IP controllers. That's cool. I can automate some stuff with it. It grew and now uh, my company, Smart Cities, specializes in private clouds, public clouds, mm -hmm. cloud in a box solutions. And uh, even with two network engineers now, <laughs> we uh, handle multiple data centers, uh, clouds for our ecosystem partners, public clouds, and all thanks to our network automation, I guess, because like two network engineers. Yeah. Yeah. I, I so appreciate how you describe that story for a lot of reasons, but one of them in particular is something we have kind of generally talked about in the, in the DevNet space for a while, which is, I'm going to use the term CCIE, but I don't just mean that. I mean network engineers who have been doing this for a while or not, tend, in, in past days, have tended to have a feeling of like, yeah, but if I automate things, then what job do I have anymore? And what you just described is exactly what we hope people can see, which is, you can be, at a fit. being a fantastic network engineer, being just a network engineer in general means you know how to solve problems because you understand how these systems connect and how they work together. Click ops, or my friend Jason Davis loves to say finger ops, is that's, finger not, ops. that's not scalable. It's, it's silly to say, but it's not, you can't, that is not a job. The job really it should be, I would hope, that we get to use this, you get to use this really creative brain to say, I think I can figure out how to solve these problems. So I can sit back and say, let me automate away the sim simple, the, the repetitive stuff, so that I don't spend my time on that. I can spend my time on saying, how do I make things better for this business that I work for? So I love that story because it epitomizes what I hope most people walk away from in the experience here, or just an experience in general around the idea of automation. Yeah, uh, totally, yeah. My ultimate goal was not only business, how I can empower my teammates, my colleagues, DevOps engineers, operation engineers, system architects, how can I empower them to use networking, to use networking side, to make changes into networking. That's not scary, guys. That's not, it's not dangerous stuff. We can, and then I added uh, to my ACI code, yeah, uh, firepower uh, templates, because as you said before, it's just templates. You can uh, define some mm -hmm. routine tasks into small templates and give the, share this template with your colleagues so they can just change network access rules, for example. Like <laughs> clicking engineer, yeah, finger engineer. It's like uh, network engineers are not network access managers. Yeah, So you right. can define your network access rule without me. Uh, you can send me PR requests. IT security guy can review this PR request, and I'm like, yeah, this looks fine, and click the button, that's it. One button, <laughs> one yes. click, so yeah. I, you know what, it's, you describing all of that sounds, on the, it sounds just so sim simple, and I mean this in a really positive way. It's not, it's not simple to implement, yeah. but once you get there, the simplicity that you're describing is that, is the thing that in the, the software development world they've been doing for years, which is someone can look at this, someone can look at this, but you can do it with, I submitted this, and three or four people are notified, and they can do sort of their peer review. Let's just make sure it's what we want, and we're good with it, and then it goes, and you don't have to like, well, let me modify that service now, take it, throw it over the wall to the next person, and maybe I'll hear back in a few days, did you look at it, or don't have that at all, and make a mistake like I might have done in my early career, and yeah, deleted yeah. VLAN dat dat one time. Oops. And like, you help, it's not that you stop those problems from happening, but you create more opportunities for someone to look at it first before it goes out in a, in a, in a prescriptive way. And it, you know, issues happen. Someone's gonna break something. That's just the world we live in. But you help yourself not have to worry about it as much. You can roll, you now with, with version control, you can roll things back a lot easier than you could before. And it, again, it saves you time so you can think about the more complex things that you want to spend yeah, time on. Totally agree with you. you bring, I wanted to bring transparency. So networking is not like something mysterious anymore. Everybody can see it. Yeah, source version controls has history, Git history. Mm -hmm. You can see who made this change. You can integrate it with your Jira, yeah? Mm -hmm. So you can track all these tickets, all these sprint reviews. So yeah, that's the ultimate goal. That's so cool. Okay, as we wrap up, put you on, putting you on the spot, one last thing. What has been, if you could say there was just one like really amazing thing, or super fun announcement or activity you've been a part of this entire week. If you could pick one that was just like, that was, the, that was the coolest thing I've done this week or been around this week, what would it be? 
Wow, that's hard. That's I know. Hard. Don't do this. <laughs> you said, please, uh, before we recorded, you're like, don't put me on the spot. And I'm like, totally won't, but I'm totally going to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're so kind. Uh, thank you. <laughs> mm, uh, I think it's, I have a full conference this year. So I have awesome. the privilege to have like meet the engineer session. Oh, awesome. So okay. I had one with Hank Preston. He's my hero, so I was so happy. Very <laughs> cool. So that's my best moment. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for sharing. Thank really you for appreciate it. Me. Yeah. Thank you.